This is the City of Flint's City Council Meeting. Presented by Spectacle Productions, determined to make a difference. And the City of Flint, City Council. The Flint Apple Club, a great place to meet friends you never have to see again. Underwritten in part by Local 370 Flint, Michigan, United Association of Union of Plumbers, Pipe Fitters, Welders, and Service Techs. Pipe Fitters Union has entry level careers available and available at 810-720-5243. For more information on how to get involved with public access and these broadcasts, you can reach out to 810-239-2901. City of Flint, City Council meeting. Up next. And I think when I look at the um, business relief, I want to factor in what the average bill is and how long it took them to get out of whack. For example, if they went three years back on business, that's kind of a little much. Mm -hmm. And then if the um, actual read took that business up over 20,000, I might look at that threshold. If it took that business over 10,000, when I factor that in with the size of the business, for example, if it was General Motors, and the way they ain't came back online, I wouldn't even include them. They need to pay it all. So each, each um, business or resident, I think we need to look at certain factors as to how long they went back. Um, income considerations for residential, if I'd even consider it, I'd put it high because the intent is not to deal with income and separate it that way. The intent is to, you know, fix these meters and get it right. The little E on the bill yep. um, versus the actual read, people mm -hmm. was getting those E's on those estimates for two and three years. Uh, maybe this program will highlight to people, or maybe in the middle of it, we can highlight the estimated read versus actual read. But what could they do proactively until we get 10, what, thousand or 28,000 meters? There's no, nothing I hope, they I hope can it's do. 11. I hope it's 11. I'm, I'm glad you said that. So just to. Um, as a bit of an aside, but to inform council, I think you know we um, had a computer malfunction, which disallowed us from um, reading any of the meters in the field for like a few days, just a few days. Um, but one of the things that we implemented in order for people to submit that, inf you know, submit their reads, we set up a, um, an email hotline, if you will, so that they can send in their reads along with a picture or form, and they can attack, attach a picture. So let's take advantage of the fact that we're in the 21st century in 2018, um, and you can go to web-based form. And I understand that everybody has the internet or that technology, but it does allow those that do have that capability or have access to that capability to submit their reads as opposed to having to deal with this little E on their bill in, for you know, a month, two months, three months, four months. So um, I'm glad we were able to get that implemented. It provides a little bit, but it provides a little bit of help, but it also provides us a mechanism that we can use on an ongoing basis. Mr. Newsom, and then I'll kind of take a breath and hear other ideas, but my initial thought was this 186,000 mm -hmm. on this initial list that we've compiled out of the 600 and some thousand, I, want, I would like for these to be all gone, okay. business and residential, we can look at them, but that would leave a total of 400 and some thousand. Yep. That mean I would be willing to then seriously explore your program that might pay more over a long term 
find matching money investment but then at the same time I would still look for another pot of money because once mm -hmm. AECOM submit the plan and if it includes me to replacement and this type of list start moving again a key part of my position on your long-term plan for others would still have to do with what I think and hope we've done with these folks. Absolutely. These folks, in my opinion, should not be cut off mm -hmm. while we work this out. I agree. And so far, I talked to Ms. Johnson as late as yesterday. And then I called her after council meeting and told her we would have this meeting today. So 100%, they should not be cut off until we come up with a solution. And so far, they have not. But right now, this list, 186,000, based upon my estimate of three, 400,000, but then the former council boosted it up to 750. And then this council, was able to put it in the middle of the grand deal and Ma get the money funded. Madam President, S S Madam President. I would yield to Mr. Mr. Thank, Mr. Griggs, thanks. you have to, Mr. Yeah, Griggs. I, was, right. I would yield to Mr. Right. Mr. Griggs. Right, but Mr. Griggs, um, you can't interrupt your colleagues. And in I, order I gonna, to- I was gonna ask if he would yield to right, me. Right, but you, you, you can't do that though. Yeah, I would and yield so, to, I would yield. I just want you to he understand, I know that Mr. Griggs, I'm trying to make sure that we understand mm -hmm. how we conduct ourselves. And so he has yielded, but it's not appropriate for you to interrupt him to ask him if he'll yield. So All now right. you have the floor, Mr. Griggs. All right, uh, I do not support taken a third, or no, a fourth of our three quarters of a million and given it to the water department for their clerical errors. This is wrong. The water department should eat this 186,000 and that will free us up for the total $750,000 that we were given to help reduce people's water rates. Just because it's just a clerical error. The water department made this mistake. The citizens did not make this mistake. They messed up to the tune of 186,000. They should eat that 186,000. We shouldn't be using it out of our three quarters of a million. So I will- Ma I'm Madam Chair. Ma Madam Chair, through you to Mr. Griggs. Mr. Griggs, I think that if you believe that the water department made the error, that might be only true in this sense. It's kind of a little off because the mechanical error of these batteries and those meters having only a 10 year lifespan, they should have been replaced after 10 years. And so whoever was in charge of the city, whether it was mayors, whether it was council people, whether it was engineers, whether it was emergency managers, they didn't put in a plan to start replacing them knowing that they had only a 10 year life. So I don't wanna just put it on the water department. I wanna put it on all other leaders and emergency managers who didn't put a timely plan in place and now in our life we got to try to catch it up and look like we might have a pot of money the hundred million that the fed sent during the water crisis but then i also want to say this uh councilperson griggs in my view if the, if, the, if the water department ate the 186,000, it would be no money there. But if we paid 186,000 out of this money, which came from the state, we really transferring 186,000 from the state to our water department. To me, that's better than just 
eaten it and wiping it off because the water department can get that 186,000 in an account versus writing it off. That 186,000 coming from the state would be advantageous in that account tucked away rather than writing it off. Now we should be able to hopefully get some more money from the state because that probably 600,000 we're talking about might be coming from a pot of 25 million that we eating up about 1.9 million a month, whatever. So I just want to add that in. I hear 100% what you're saying, but rather than write it off, and even the law in some cases, when I have hearings with a mondonym, they keep referring to the law don't allow us to provide free water. And so some of the state statutes um, might try to make people pay for that. But my position is the state messed some stuff up. They had emergency managers here take their money, put it in our coffers, whether it's the water department, the general fund, the legal department. The con so rather than write it off, I want to put the money there. And those are my thoughts. And the water meter battery life is a problem. And we got thousands more to fix. Thank you, Madam Chair. Thank you, Councilman Mays. Does anyone else have any questions for Mr. Newsom? You say, do anybody have any other questions for him? Correct. So if I, if I may, Madam Chair? Please. Just so I can summarize. I think that you know I didn't hear any responses from the rest of the council from from the rest of the council. So this is what I heard, Councilman Mays. I think where your landing is, let's pay the 186 now. Let's use the let's take the balance, try to match it with some other funds from other maybe from the philanthropic community, what whatnot, and get to roughly probably just south of a million dollars, and then we could look at potentially endowing that amount of money. Um, and then from there, what you're looking at is, in terms of eligibility, let's look at 10 units. And what, I, what, you know, what we in the administration want to do, because there are a lot of people that are eager to get this um, finalized, we can get the money in, the, in, you know, in our doors. Um, I'm going to write a resolution that talks about 10 units as the eligibility. So that brings the 186 down a little bit, because some of the, some of the people on that list are 10, you know, they have $10.50 that from a unit of usage or, or one unit correction, whatnot. So we're going to write that resolution, adjust the numbers to reflect 10 units, um, unit, 10 unit, a 10 unit threshold. And we'll also do it um, where we look at businesses that are, say, under 10,000, with, with accounts under 10,000. We, we will um, sunset that relief. We won't, we won't provide that level of relief if, you, if you're a business under 10,000, with, with an account under 10,000. I just want to make sure I heard that correctly. Madam Chair. Wait, is it, Councilman Mays, do you mind if I make that statement? Thank you. I appreciate it. Um, Mr. Newsom, and I just want to say that um, I think that when we look at relief for commercial mm -hmm. um, accounts, I would want the ability to look and see whether they are apartment complexes that have not paid their water bill and therefore residents have suffered. Mm -hmm. um, I would also like to look at the type of establishment that it is via car washes, um, dispensaries. Those are um, high water use um, businesses. Mm -hmm. and, 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 I, and, and I'm trying to wrap my mind around it. And, and the reason why is um, those companies or businesses have different things that they can use. And, and, and I guess like part of it is there's the ability to write off certain things that residential people don't have. Mm -hmm. um, so that would be something that, that I would hope that we would um, consider in this as well. And also, as much as I want to bring relief to those that find themselves with 
an overinflated water bill for whatever reason. I don't want to overlook residents that have been paying high water bills. And so I, I don't want residents to feel like we've secured money right. that, they, that the only way that they can benefit from those dollars is if they had higher water bills because of estimate and actual bills. And so I would like a more uniformity way of um, bringing some sort of relief. Understood. Let me, if I may respond to your last point first um, with a couple of things. Don't forget that we still have the RAP program. I'm not saying that is a robust program that doesn't need to be subsidized. But we do have the RAP program that is coming from GLEWA, so that's number one. And then number two, I think if we are smart about it, um, we can write the resolution so that the remaining funds after this, I'm going to say 150,000. I don't know if it's going to be 180, 150. We have to do the calculations based on, on, on this advice that Councilman Mays has provided. We can have a larger discussion around what do we do with that balance plus whatever funds we're able to gain at a later time once the administration goes out and finds some, uh, some supplemental funds, if that makes sense. Mm -hmm. So in my mind, you know, the here and now, the say, let's say 186 for now, I don't think it's going to be that much. We can focus on the residential stipulations we've talked about here, along with some, of, some more commercial flags around apartment complexes, high use businesses such as car washes, et cetera. Bring that forward to you and write a resolution with the language that says that at a later point in time, we will seek to find supplemental funds for the balance of the, of the money. And at a later point in time, we'll talk about the eligibility for that. Does that work for, for council? I, I, I can't say, but mm -hmm. um, Huey, will you help me understand your spreadsheet that you provided? Because yes. I'm doing my best. I want to just, for simplicity um, purposes, um, take the very first figure yep. on the first page. Mm -hmm. So after all the blanks, it says current adjustment amount. Yes. And then adjustment amount filtered. And I'm assuming that this filter amount is the running total that gives us our grand total on the end. Is that correct? That is correct. So okay. let me, so what we did, mm -hmm. if you see the adjusted usage column, you are looking at this, right? Mm -hmm. The spreadsheet. Yes. The mm -hmm. adjusted usage column is the adjustment in the usage that it was basically the the correction in the water meter read. So right? the first one, so that I can see if my colleagues are on the same. I don't know if they need it, but just for clarity's sake, we're looking at number three fifty nine, date posted eight seventeen, meter read six oh five, adjusted usage two sixty one. Huey on mm -hmm. the first page. I just want to make sure. If just a second, Councilwoman, I want to look. At okay. You. Okay, thank you. And Ms. Galloway. Yeah. Councilman Mays. No, I'm good. Oh, okay. I'm, I'm keeping up. Okay, I'm, I'm with you. I'm sorry. Yes, I see that one. So if I go across there on the way to read this on August 17, 2017, I actually read the meter. I got an actual read of 605 units. Mm -hmm. I had to adjust what was in the record by 261 units. Mm. The balance on that account is $2,851, and the adjusted amount is $2,740 and 50 cents. So now in the essence, yeah. So 2740 times and a half is 261 times $10.50. Right. Mm -hmm. So in essence, their current balance was what, it, what the estimates had been accumulating. And so if we got the actual read, would mm -hmm. we technically have added 2851 plus 2740? Actually, no, the 2740 is included. So basically In they, that were 2851. Running, they were running about a $100 balance. Okay. And then we came and corrected okay. it, and they saw this big, huge 605 okay. usage, I'm sorry, 261 unit okay. increase. So that caused their bill to go from roughly at 100 all the way up to uh, 2740. So and is there the ability to say how long 
that account have been on the estimate? Like, um, is it like three years? That's harder to is get it? Okay. because we have to, we, we can do this based on one report. Okay. It's a little harder because we have to go back and build a more dynamic um, I got uh, uh, data, data sheet. Okay, and I was only asking because mm -hmm. it seems like if we're going to create some consistency, it might be helpful yep. to have a cutoff time. Yeah. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Because, you know, the Mrs. What? Johnsons right. are, 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 hopefully, <laughs> that's not the Gonna standard, happen. right? right? Um, but just making sure that maybe in the... Yeah, and my, my, so, my hope is, going back to what Councilman Mays' point before, my hope is is that with the six-month um, ordinance that, that yeah. was passed by council, mm -hmm. we're going to see that limited mm -hmm. um, going forward. That's, that's the expectation. Okay, thank you. Ma yeah, Madam Chair, when you look at this list, it looked like it starts with the high ones, that 2,700, and it's showing a gradual escalation down. I did that on purpose. You did that on I purpose sorted. to the last page where right. they are somewhere around $10, one unit, $21, two units. And so if we had to look at this, yep. mm -hmm. and I know how you might look at stuff, <laughs> I can't speak for you, if I went and said I wanted to not pay the pages that was like I see seventy three dollars fifty two dollars right. um them the adjusted amounts then I see ninety four dollars a hundred and five dollars right It's not for me to say that somebody can pay ninety four dollars, but it might be for me to say whether or not we deal with the 21 and 31 dollars. So yep. I would look at that and I would say to you, when you come to me with these has been paid, mm -hmm. I might can stop at the $42 shut off level mm -hmm. and listen to residents, but you know, I ain't no way when it start getting up to the hundred and twenty seven hundred. Well, will I, so that might do something, but I'm just throwing stuff out there because remember my initial position is wipe these out, and that included the ten dollar ones as well. Right. But those aren't bad adjustments. That one unit, two units, and right. that type mm -hmm. of thing. So if we set the unit adjustment somewhere around 10 units or right. more or something like that, I can see that logic because in dollars and cents, to, yeah. as long as they can do the appeal, because when they have a problem and they appeal it, then we look at them on an individual basis. I know Ms. Johnson and others, I sit in on the appeal. And so we must continue to highlight the appeal process and I would say, as we set up whatever creative matching funds or financing we do with the remainder of the money, if that's how it turns out, I still want to see if we can operate with a policy mm -hmm. of holding them shutoffs in abeyance until we see if we pay 20%, 50%, 80%, or 100% right. in the future. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I just want to get this offer these people's worries and back, um, make sure that they ain't cut off for something that really they was out of their control and out of our control. But some people prior might could have did some updating and changing the meters gradually, and they didn't do that. Right. And so I want to find out too, what's the dates of these meters? Um, I'm going to probably try to make a referral because once I find out the dates and the life of these meters, it might not matter to some, but I want to see who was in control of the city. I want to look at that administration and I want to see who was in control. Was it a mayor? Was it a city administrator? You seem to agree with me, Councilman Griggs. I want to see just for my sake, who was in control, because we got a monumental test ahead of us trying to clear this up. And um, I want to know um, 
who was in control and so forth and so on from when we start putting last meters. I know they changed, but we gonna be able to find a bulk date and we ain't got to get to that right away. Um, so, I don't know. I want to see if my colleagues, the majority here, agree. I'm thinking we should just wipe these folks out and then have some change left over and see if we can make it grow and prepare because this money man, you know, he always want to make money grow. And that's a good quality if you want to make money grow, you a money man. I don't want to be a spending money man and ain't got no money left to spend. So it seemed like it's an easy one for me. Take care of what's in front of us now and we'll build and look at the future and develop criteria together later. I, and I would want to keep this on what? Governmental ops? Is it on governmental finance. ops now, Ms. Madam Chair, through you to Mr. Garrett? I think it's on finance right now. Is it on finance? Um, I might want to move it to governmental ops as far as operations. and. I'd rather ask that it be moved. If it's got my name on it on finance, I would request that it be moved from finance to governmental operations, if it's okay with you, Mr. Chairman. That's okay with me. Because it deals with money, it should be in finance. Beg your pardon? Because it deals with money, it should be in finance. It's normally what we put as a discussion item. Yeah, but it also deals with the operations as it relates to water meters, and I prefer the chairperson of um, governmental ops. So, you know, they can keep it on finance, but if he don't mind, I want to really be able to get into how we're going to operate this thing, and I just prefer the chairperson um, in governmental ops. So that's my position. Mr. Newsom, um, does it affect finances? I, it definitely affects finances. If it just directly impacts the, um, it, you know, the Im it impacts the health of the water fund, um, which, as you know, we're we're working to make. Um, we're working on the solvency of the water fund. This is very. This is a very critical piece of it. Um, but to Councilman Mays's point, a couple of points I do want to bring out. Now I will allow Council um, perhaps to close this and, and make the determination. Mm -hmm of whether or not this is governmental ops versus finance. But um, you know, to a couple of points I did want to circle back to you. I think it is incredibly important um, that the administration provide to council not just a resolution at some point of, you know, uh, around a water meter program, obviously a, a bid, you know, a you know, contractor and, and that sort of thing, but also a comprehensive package which does talk about, okay, what, what are we proposing? What do we need to see in terms of how we're going to address those residents on an ongoing basis when they see these corrections? What are we gonna do to protect these meters, this investment? This is a, you know, 10, I don't want to put numbers, lock myself to numbers, but you know, 10 to $12 million investment, what are we gonna do? So th there's gonna be some discussion where we'll bring some things, there'll be some give and take around that, um, but, I, I definitely hear you around the need for a uh, you know a policy around around how we're going to deal with residents when we bring out these new water meters. So that's number one, and number two, I, just to confirm, the when we come back with a resolution, whether or not it's in finance or governmental ops, the resolution will assume that our cutoff is going to be 10 units, or I think um, you mentioned $105, and we'll kind of figure out what we're going to, we might have some language around what do we do for those that had under that amount of an adjustment um, in terms of maybe there is a, um, some sort of a, um, a, 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 an ad hoc relief, if you will, or petitioning process that's done. Yeah, on maybe a match or something. Something we'll like see. that. So let, let us think about that for those residents, but the, the way that we'll word the resolution for now will be around 10 and above, which is $105 and above, we will um, put that as, you know, as those residents will get relief. And then we'll have to um, propose some language around how we deal with the commercial uh, aspect. Madam, Mr. Newsom. Can I say this Please. real quick? Um, the finance is one thing, financial resolutions, the fund, 
but the operations of how we operate and how we gonna do meters and how we operate. Even the ordinance that I introduced to only go back six months, legislative. So sometimes some of this stuff overlap. And I'm not really just talking about the funding of this. I'm talking about how the city is gonna operate as it relates to this and the future. So just to clear up, I believe it's a place in, for the discussion in government or ops, um, finance, even some legislative stuff. So I think we can sort that out there on how our committees work. And I do clearly understand the differences of the committees and what we work on. Thank you, Madam Chair. Thank you. Um, Mr. Newsom. In, um, in an effort for transparency? Do we need to get community um, feedback to do what we're trying to do? Uh, you know, I, this is when Ms. Jamaica Patrick Singleton, I will refer to her. I know that she has been, um, you know, been involved with the, with the creation of this, or the, um, the, let's say the inception of this proposal. Um, so I do want to have her provide some feedback, if I may, Council uh, Chairwoman. Um, bring her to the podium. Thank, Thank you. Thank you. Good evening. Mm -hmm. um, so, just to answer your question, for transparency purposes, I think that it's always important to get community feedback. We have already spoken with like the United Way, who does these types of programs throughout the community and we got a lot of feedback from them on how these pro types of programs work and, and different things. But as we move forward and create a program, um, I think that it, it is important to get community feedback. Um, so, you know, there's a few different ways that we can go about getting community feedback and that's something that we can discuss. Um, Absolutely through you guys as you work with um, the residents in your wards and at different community groups um, that Huey, myself, and some more members of the um, administration attend throughout the community. But just gathering that feedback and bringing it back just to make sure we're being transparent and that we're creating programs that are impactful. Um, uh. Huey, Huey, I just thought of something. Um, I don't want you to leave yet, but um, is, is there the ability for residents that still don't know that they have an overinflated water bill, right? Because if we have as many faulty meters as you say, um, there could very well be people that are just estimates, 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 and until something happens that they get a working meter, mm -hmm. they don't even know. So they, we could find that, I mean, we did put the ordinance in place, but my question is, um, is it your hopes that we would save some of this money to help those residents and how long, and I, I don't, I mean, you're not, you can't predict the future, but I know that long term you were saying you hope that this plan lasts, I don't remember how no, your dowry we, we, worked. We want, it, we want it to last. You want, we wanted to get enough of a, a large enough sum of money to endow it so that the returns on that investment will be enough. You know, obviously you have down years, but um, the returns on that investment will be enough to pay for relief on an ongoing basis. Mm -hmm. So we, we, our vision was this would really, you know, last in perpetuity. And yep. do we ever have the ability, like um, I'm a giver, and um, a lot of the places that I give will send me notices from time to time saying this month we've received um, a generous donor that has said everything that we come up with they'll match. Mm -hmm. um, do we have the ability to leverage some of this money for those type mm -hmm. of um, philanthropic people and or organizations? I have to look at it. Okay. Um, I definitely have to look at it. And okay. so you can send, you feel free to, to, you know, to send me or I can pick up anything, any material you have. I mean, our goal up, up to this point has been looking at the foundation route. Right. Um, but we're definitely open to some other, you know, some other avenues. Okay. Mm -hmm. Madam um, Chair. Councilman Mays. 
Yeah, as, as far as the transparency in that aspect of what um, the recovery officer talked about, my position is noted in both the old charter and the new charter. In the new charter, when you look at it, it's kind of reflective of the old charter, section 1-801, the rulemaking procedure whether we make a procedure or rules dealing with this or even the second agenda item as it relates to the houses. Under the charter, it requires a procedure for the adoption of rules. And then once you follow that procedure, it's followed with public notice of a public hearing. And so that's what I would look at as it relates to making rules in the city and um, public input. Um, that rulemaking procedure 1-801 and the subsequent um, complementary um, articles that follow is what I think will give the public ample input as we adopt rules and ordinances and so forth and so on. Um, I'm gonna, we're going to hear from our attorney, Ms. Wheeler. No, I just wanted to get a little bit more clarification on that because we have a separate procedure for ordinances. That's correct. The charter. That's and correct. For resolutions. So That's correct. It's, like I said, I think you have to read it in its context with regard to what 8-101 means, and it doesn't mean ordinances or... Um, no, I say we have a certain way of having public hearings for rules and ordinances and so forth. Two separate issues. The ordinance section is different from 1-801, but the adoption of rules and that type of thing seems to fall up under that public hearing and notice and input section and the rulemaking section. And I've been around for years and people don't do it. They just set and compile rules and they make up rules, but ordinances, yeah, we have public hearings, but I'm just referring to the charter as it relates to the notice and transparency and public input. resolutions, I guess, the only input is public comment. It don't require public hearing in some cases, but ordinances and rules, according to what I read, do. Yeah. Ms. Wheeler, would you like to clarify? Yeah, I think that's a little bit, um, I don't think that's completely accurate because this talks about when there's, this is whenever the charter requires the adoption of rules, and and so you have to look in the areas in which the charter requires adoption of rules to know what that means. So I think you just have to read it within its context. And let me let me hold on, man. Excuse me. Yeah. Um, Whatever the charter requires, it says whenever the charter requires the adoption of a rule, it shall be adopted in accordance with this section. The person having rule making authority or an agent shall give public notice of a hearing. And so in my position, if I was to go back and read other sections of the charter, if I was to read preamble, declaration of rights, my responsibility to the people and rules that affect the people, um, the, the charter is requiring me from my interpretation when I read it as a whole to adopt rules in an open and transparent way. And so I'm not going to sit here right now, but if need be, if this meeting continue, then I'll go in the preamble, I'll go in the Declaration of Rights, and then I'll show you where, in my opinion, I'm required to be open and transparent in rulemaking. I was just pointing out the ability to do input on not only these rules, but the rules as it relates to, in my opinion, the houses. I would rather be safe than sorry. And so before this meeting is up, I'll guarantee you, I'll show you from my view 
in the Preamble Declaration of Rights and other articles um, of this charter where I think it requires us to do certain things with rules. So, Councilman Mays, just for my clarification, um, you, I think you mentioned houses just now. So were you referring that to what we're going to be discussing or were you saying that they were looped together, what we were talking about now and that? I'm just yeah, kidding. later on in the agenda, we'll be talking about rules as it relates to houses. And we have a rule-making committee as it relates to our council rules. All of these adoptions of rules, in my opinion, will require following 1-801 of the charter. And just for my own clarification, since you asked that question, um, are we holding meetings on rules? Because um, I hear you talking about them. I don't, um, I'm specifically making my question to Councilman Davis. I believe you are the chairperson of that. And I'm, so I'm wondering, is that underway? And if so, um, if you could just make, make me aware of when you're holding those meetings and how you're doing it, just well, in, in an ability to be part of that. Since we're, because since we're tying this all together, I want to understand Absolutely. it. Well, Madam Chair, at this time, we, we're in this uh, part of getting ready to start holding conversation on the rules per okay. uh, uh, President uh, Winfrey. Winfrey. Okay. When you get out the hospital, we we'll continue the conversation. Okay. Thank you. Okay. So, um, does anybody have anything else for um, Mr. Newsom and our chief recovery officer? Is that right? Yes. Perfect. Does anyone else have any, um, Mr. Guerra, yeah, Councilman Guerra? I just want to point out what was brought to my attention, uh, just regarding the water rates, real quick, about the new section in the Flint City Charter, which is Section 8204, uh, which is the collection of uh, utility rates and char ch charges. Uh, this kind of explains the new procedure. So just kind of if anybody was interested in looking at that, it talks about how we need new ordinance. Point of create. information. Councilman Mays. What section? Section 8-204. And then if our attorney would like to explain that for us, just for the record. Actually, I, actually, we already do this too, as far as collection rates for municipality and, and um, the rates. That's that's done annually, I, I believe. Um, and matter of fact, I think that's in the previous charter um, as well. But that yeah, that section says the council shall provide by ordinance for the collection of rates and shall in, in charges of public utilities services furnished by the city. Council shall pass an ordinance to create a dispute resolution process to address unpaid water bills left by tenants or water liens from previous owners. And we already have a process in place in 46-17, I think it is. So, I mean, these are just some of the kind of the, um, some things we have to work through because we already have a section that already covers this in the ordinances. But like I said, the council as a legislative body, if they want to change that, they can do that. But that goes back to there being an ordinance process. Um, and, and that's something that can be done through the legislative body. I have a question. Councilman Gary, you brought that up. Was there something that you saw in that that, that is not being uh, explain properly because I, no, I think I I'm brought confused. It, I brought it up for the record because we were talking about rates changes and I was just one of the part of the new city charter so just bring it up in case anybody was interested in looking at it that was up here while we were discussing this topic with Huey just so Angela could state it so we know uh, what it's for and that we already have those procedures as she was explaining. I think I'll, I think I might be confused because Huey we're not talking about rate changes. No I think okay. what they're talking about is enforcement and you know policies around enforcement and collection as opposed to rate right. changes which is, okay. is something Madam Chair. Rate okay. changes. Madam I just Chair. want to make sure that I'm on, on course Chair. to understand Councilman Mays. Yeah but when uh, Councilman Guerra 
Dara pointed it out, the council shall provide by ordinance for collection of rates and charges for public utility. These are charges. I can kind of see some of the relevance, but I think Ms. Wheeler was accurate because we have ordinances in place and we have dispute resolutions already in place. So even when you read this section through you, Madam Chair, to Mr. Guerrero, it's a specifically left by tenants or water liens from previous owners. So they was getting at something. They not covering, in my opinion, current homeowners, and they um, they dealing with tenants, or and they dealing with or water liens from previous owners. So whatever they was getting at was a narrow scope, but it doesn't deal with the majority of the people I represent, which is homeowners and others. So. Whatever they scope is, that's why this charter is in effect. But for us to know the details in the implementation, it takes time. If you look at the beginning of the 1974 charter that told people to implement conflict of interest ordinances, you know, after the charter was adopted, they still wasn't done from 74 to 2016. So all of the charter people that's beating the bushes, I'm cautioning council, take your time, create ordinances that deals with ethics and what it means, qualifications and what we're looking for, take your time. And even in this one, on the surface, it do fit, but at the end, it narrows the scope. And so um, I love it when we have these kind of working sessions. And so uh, I'm quiet. Mr. Newsom, Mr. Griggs, do you have something? Yes, what's the point of this discussion right now? I, 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 I can't ask. If, if you want yeah. to do a point of information, feel free to do so. I'll recognize you. It's a waste of time. Um, Mr. Newsom, do you have anything else you want to add with us to the, at this time? I think, I think I've got enough so that the administration can go back. The only thing I would say is our goal would be to try to get this on, the, um, on an agenda for committee on the 21st. But, but you know, we, we do need to sit down and make sure the, re the language reflects what we think we heard tonight. So, and I, you know, we'll work this out with the city administrator as well as, as well as the city clerk in terms of if this comes to special affairs, if we need a little bit more time, um, I would request that. But let us go back. We've gotten the feedback that I'd hope to get, so I appreciate council for that. And let us go back and articulate this in, in, some, in some language of a resolution and come back to you at the appropriate time. Thank you. Mr. Newsom, Mr. Newsom, I just, um, as it, it it's not relating to this, but it, it is only because you may mention, and I want to see if what you may mention to is, um, relates to the calls that I've gotten from residents there. And I've talked to um, Mr. Bra Rob Bensick yep. um, and Steve Branch, but I haven't received a response Okay. that I can share with residents. So I'm getting this overwhelming number of calls from um, residents that have received a notice asking to read their meters right. and call them in, and they were angry about it mm -hmm. um, because, and I didn't, I didn't get a letter, I haven't seen a letter, no one's provided me a letter, but um, a couple of the residents said that the letter stated that there was a breakdown of trucks, and I don't know if that was a glitch, but you mentioned that there was a breakdown for a couple of days, so my question is, is that letter not relevant right now, or so is it? That, that letter should not be, we should not be sending that on, on, a, on an ongoing basis. However, and I wish Mr. Benzik was here, um, you know, we just implemented, uh, you know, the equipment, the computer equipment to do the reads. Mm -hmm. We did send that out to get fixed by the vendor and that was taken care of. 
but um, I would, you know, I will, will refer to Mr. Benzik, who unfortunately isn't here, okay. in terms of whether or not that computer is working on an ongoing basis. But my understanding is that that computer is working now, so that they can do the remote reads. Okay. And um, uh, Madam Chair, if I may, I'll, I'll let Ms. Patrick Singleton okay. talk. Madam Chair. Um, Mr. Newsom and I went to a meeting and we, we, we got that information from a number of residents. And so I had taken their information down and went back to find out what, you know, how can we address that. And I was told that that issue is no longer. Okay. And that the residents can disregard that letter. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Um, Ms. Wheeler had something she wanted to add. This is just an effort to, to clarify because we might be saying the same thing, but I still want to clarify it because if you look under 6-101, multiple member bodies, it talks about how you can establish one. Later on, when you get to subsection B6, it talks about the adoption of rules in, con in consistent with 1-801. So, I like I said, I don't want to muddy the waters, but I wanted to just provide that because, like I said, there was a place for it, but there's, I think it has more to do with that than and some other things, and I know we'll, we'll debate later, so. And Mr. Newsom, would it be appropriate for me to make a referral for Mr. Bensick to, or, or do you think we're straight? I, I, I think it's, this referral will be, will be pretty easy for an update on the status of okay. the computer that does the reads. We can do that okay. um, in um, finance committee. I, well, I'll let does you that seem right, one. finance? Um, I, or I feel it should be finance, okay. but I'll let, I'll let the council make May I make a referral for an update on the um, letters for? All residents doing, doing yes. reads, reading yes, and the malfunctioning meters. computer equipment. Okay. Madam Thank Chair. Thank you, Councilman Mays. Yeah, through you to Ms. Wheeler, you know, I've been in court with you a couple of times and lost, so I'm not going to argue about it. But if, 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 if you read it that way and you are the attorney who I rely on, I'm just reading. I done lost to you twice, so it's okay. But I still want to then come back and say, if it's possible to do it, you know, but I don't want to do rule making all across the board under 1 801. So I know you persistent and I heard you loud and clear, and we'll take it from there. But Mr. Murphy, who was a charter commission member, and reference to Mr. Guerrero's point that we look at the charter in um, 8 202 subsection B, and I see Miss Wheeler moving, because if I speak wrong, Mr. Newsom, and she gonna move like a cat. I'm used to it, and this is how she do it. Um, Mr. Mays, and, and, and so, and it'll be a certain tone, and so I'm now <laughs> looking at 8-202-203, yeah, 203 rates, um, subsection B, within two years of the enactment of this charter, the city council shall pass an ordinance creating a payment assistance program for residential water and sewer customers in need. I think that's going to naturally happen within two years because of the money coming in from the RAP program. And so we'll probably create that by ordinance and we'll be well within that two years. So I'm trying to do you better than what Miss Wheeler do me. I'm saying to Mr. Guerrero's point, but to Miss Wheeler's point, I can I I love the interpretation of one point um eight oh one. I looked at the preamble, like I said before the meeting is up, and all I can do is look at the um part that say the benefits of local self government and to provide for an honest, transparent, and accountable government. And so for an honest, transparent, and accountable government, I don't mind 1-801, but we do have to compile rules and policies and give them and publish them for publication, which we already got. Ms. Brown, you can probably find rules and stuff published and in file. So um, I'm satisfied Madam Chair, with this section of the meeting, 
I'll wait to see when the administration moves, but the quarter, the three quarters of a million dollar question for me, and I'm going to frame it that way, the three quarters of a million dollar question for Councilman Mays and I guess my colleagues too, have that money hit our coffers, if not when, and do we have to have these policies and rules in place before it hit? Have the state sent that 600 and some thousand, and if not, when can we expect it? So the answer, if, Madam Chair, if I may. Please. If I, the, the answer to your question is this. They are waiting on us to understand exactly how we're going to distribute the money. And so we need to, that's one of the reasons why it's so pertinent for us to sit down and get this hammered out as opposed to dragging this out over a series of months. Because they're asking for us for some sort of resolution or something binding that says how we're going to distribute the funds. They will um, uh, give it to us in the form of a DEQ grant. But before that, and they are you know, waiting for us to provide some feedback in terms of how we're going to structure it. So, if I may, this water relief fund is coming in the form of a DEQ grant. I always thought it was coming out of the $25 million state fund. So, regardless of where it come from, that's going to change my attitude as well on making these roofs. And so I would ask that um, the first part of the resolution come to us in the next committee meeting and then we uh, may be poised if we agree to pass it at the next council meeting. And if in fact um, it suffices that um, your matching fund and all that type stuff, whatever the rest of the plan is, be together, I don't know if they will allow us to amend it later, but I think we got a rough diagram and draft of what we want to do with that money. Right. We want to give some relief to these folks who had these estimated bills. And we put an ordinance in place to make it hopefully not go out of whack anymore. So I'm eager to get those monies released. So I'm going to ask that all of this be to us by the next committee meeting and we ready to pass a overall program, including the 186 or whatever that money will be mm -hmm. by next council meeting. If you don't make it, I ain't gonna lose sleep as long as folks getting cut or ain't getting cut off who fits this category. Take your time. I'm just saying I'm ready for the state in whatever form to release that money and I want these people to know that they finna get some relief. So if the headlines are saying relief is on the way, right around the corner, amen. Thank Ma you. Madam President. Councilman Griggs. 1-801 doesn't have anything to do with the topic of this meeting. Now why are we wasting time talking about Charter 1-801. Madam Chair. Um, it has nothing to do with this meeting. Madam Chair. Wait a minute, Mr. Uh, Councilman Mays. Um, Councilman what's, what's, Griggs, what's to do with well, this? he was sharing how you could see how there is a scope of it. Share. Right, I'm just, Councilman Mays. Madam Chair, through you to Councilman Griggs. This is. Madam Chair, through you to Councilman Griggs. Councilman Griggs, we are creating some rules but that in order to... But that should be in the rules committee. Point of information. And that's okay. Point of information. Um, is it appropriate for me to remind this council that we still have public speaking? Yeah. And we do want to respect their time because we still have other yeah, items and I think on the agenda. This, I think we got this wrapped up. But through you, Madam Chair, Councilman, Councilman Griggs, we was just looking at if the rules yeah. are going to be made and transparent to the public, did we have a procedure where the public can come up and talk before we adopt any rules or procedure? So in that point, I thought it might be relevant because if the public listened to us, 
even though they can put a slip in and talk. Mm -hmm. 1-801 allows them to come to the mic and tell us, should we change these rules? Do they like them, yes or no? So for me, I thought it had something to do with it because them people vote for me. And I want to hear after we talk about it what they think. So maybe some would say it did. Some would say it didn't, but it ain't a big deal with me. But I'm going to always try to see if I can let the public, you know, say something. That was my thought. Thank you. So is everybody good? So will we say that we're safe to move on? Is that appropriate? Madam Clerk, public speaking, please. Our first speaker for this evening is uh, Mr. R. L. Mitchell. Mr. Mitchell. Good evening, Council. I'm Mr. R. L. Mitchell. And I want to speak on this uh, subject called one dash eight oh one. That's something got to do with the public speaking before you people make this situation in Flint about this uh water situation, about water bill and that E thing on there. And I want you to know this stuff started way back in 74. And I became a house owner in I was a house owner in 78. And I had and I was intending to be a house owner forever until the people's in Flint, until the mayor walked out his own job, Mary McCree, because he didn't want us to be the first one to throw the blow at the other generation that this guy here talking about what they gotta do with it. This the white beard dude over here talking about what to do with that, well, about the public. And and like like we people's in Flint, they can't even must speak up. I got the biggest job in Flint, working at General Motors Truck Assembly, and my house was on Laredo, 501. And I was paying the water bill, everything, and I didn't even pay early. I didn't even get a check back from, from overpaying. But I figured, well, one day they said, sir, you got to go pay your property tax. That's the only thing I didn't pay. So I went down to pay my property tax. They said, sir, you five minutes late, so you not, we taking your house and everything from you. I said, no, you ain't. I, I refuse. I'm the only, I'd rather become homeless. I've been homeless for 30 years now. And I've still been living. Right over there on Laredo, from Laredo, Austin, all the way on Russell, all through that neighborhood. And Sherman, started from Sherman. And you people act like people said, like Mr. Newsom talking that stuff, but it's, I'm for that program because it should be on Governor Ops because he a money maker for Flint. I want all that money back what you took from me. And Mr. Where you go? <laughs> the dude didn't took off again. But anyway, but anyway, that man back there was talking about the liquids on the property, talking about a second chance. If anybody get a second chance, I'm going to get there he is. Can't I mention his name now? The spaghetti dude talking about an offer you can't refuse. Talk his name start with like a spaghetti. The mafia. This guy right here. Mo I can't have anyway. And Madam President, just give me my money from, cause I'm a, I'm an American dream. I I got a house with a picket fence around it. Before I got that started, I got a family and stuff. They still around here in this city somewhere. It just costs no, I'm all naive, like, like they ain't saying nothing about it, like, like they ain't still living in York. And it's Black History Week too, month, and Mary McCree, you, walk, you think my mayor gonna walk out like Mary McCree? No, y'all want her to, y'all want the, the mayor downstairs to walk out, she ain't walk out, and I want, I want all my money back. Thank you. You got that? Thank Talk you. Madam Clerk, next speaker. Our next speaker is Mr. Arthur Woodson, Mr. Woodson. And uh, I hate Mr. Newsom left. Uh, one of the questions is, the meters was defected during Dane Walling. Greg Easton made a serious uproar about those meters being defected, and they knew that they was defected. 
in your committee meeting, when David Sabuda was here, David Sabuda said that we didn't have enough people to go out and fix the meters. That is on the city. The city was mailing out fraudulent, uh, fraudulent bills because they knew that later on down the line, when those meters are changed, the people was gonna have to pay. Now, when this happened, the per cubic feet was $7.92. And if I'm not mistaken, he said that they was gonna charge $10.50 per con, which is per cubic feet. Is that every year? Because if it was estimated in 2017 and if the per cubic feet was $7.92 per cubic feet, then that's what they should be charged, not $10.50 <laughs> per cubic feet. Then the meters was defective. Uh, uh, now the sewer portion. You know, they charge you by the sewer portion on how much water you use. Will the sewer portion be added in on that? And then we need to find the $552,000 that they supposedly gave us back from the water fund, plus the $67,500 that Waymire, that y'all voted against the contract, where is that money? Then at the same time, how would uh, they go get the money back? We, the public, need to be able to see what y'all are reading also. We're not able to follow along with what y'all are reading. Uh, I've seen that President Trump uh, is not going to try to take the money out for the Great Lakes. We have the Enbridge Line 5 that's right there in front of our uh, pipeline, our intake. So if Lake Huron goes down, where do we get our water from? Because our primary and our backup is right there at Lake Huron. So if our water go down, where are we going to get our water from? And then uh, we need to fix our plan up. Now, going off of that, uh, the HUD sheet that I gave y'all last night, that wasn't written up by me. That was written up by Gerald Henry, who works for HUD, who sent the information down here. All right, so uh, everything that he sent me wasn't my rules. That is what he said we supposed to went by. And then on top of that, last night, I didn't hear you all ask what was the minor and what was, uh, I forgot the other word, start with an S. Uh, huh? Substantial. Substantial amount. What is substantial amount compared to the minor amount? I didn't hear that. Then when you ask what are the issues that HUD addressed or won't address, those issues was never answered. So I would like to hear also what were those issues also. So thank you very much. Madam Clerk, last speaker. Okay. Our last speaker is Mr. Quincy Murphy. Mr. Murphy. Good evening. Quincy Murphy, again, um, clear sum up, verify. Um, yesterday with the charter, um, we, the Charter Commission has put the charter in place on an August ballot because one of the things we said, if, if the residents um, um, voted down the charter, we had a second chance at um, getting approved in the November ballot. So when we put the charter on the ballot in August, it wasn't to rush the charter. We had worked on the charter two and a half years. It wasn't no any kind of political attempt to go after the charter because we wanted the voters to hurry up. The voters could have voted no, and people who was opposed to the voters of the charter could have went and um, campaigned, which they was out there saying, I say vote no for the charter, but the residents wanted to vote yes. So it wasn't no attempt to try to push no charter to um, get the um, charter on the August ballot. Yeah, we had a um, design to get it done in August. And also, the charter and the master plan is two different things. The charter deal with, um, the master plan deal with the ground, the land, the dirt. The charter um, deals with policies. So it's two different things, those apples and oranges. So please, that is not accurate. And um, I want to talk about um, session 8-203 dealing with the rates. And thank you, um, Santino um, and Eric Mays for um, listening to me when I was giving y'all the sessions in the charter. One of the things that we talked about in the charter that I know I ch emphasize on was trying to establish some kind of water relief funds in the charter to help residents deal with the charter. So while you guys having discussion dealing with um, the um, RAP program, 
I think it would be good to just kill two birds and one stone and deal with what we put in the charter, and that was trying to, um, in session 8-203, it says, within two years of the enactment of this charter, the city council shall pass an ordinance creating a payment assistance program. So I would like to see y'all discussion around a RAP program dealing with a payment assistance program longevity for the city of Flint. So even though you guys got $750,000, I would hate to see you guys spend all of that um, helping residents or commercial people with their water and then um, in the charter longevity, we want a payment assistance program to be able to help residents 10, 20, 15, 30 years from now. So hopefully y'all um, take that in consideration and deal with the um, charter that deals with trying to create a program around water assistance program. And um, back to Arthur Wilson, I hate to um, say he was right, but um, we do want to see um, back in the back the um, financial um, breakdown of what it is that you guys are discussing. Because just having a little piece of um, language dealing with the um, council meeting is not good enough for us. We want to be able to look at those numbers too. Thanks. Thank you. Um, we are now um, at a point where if council members would like to utilize their two minutes to address any of the, the three Speakers, this is the opportunity to do that. Mr. T Madam Chair. Councilman Mays. Well, one of my favorite speakers and persons is Mr. R.L. Mitchell. I appreciate Mr. Mitchell, and I understand a lot and most of what points he's making as it relates to uh, Mr. Woodson referring to the origin of the written communications that was passed out. I can appreciate that. As far as the continued communications between Ms. Suzanne Wilcox and um, Hood, we'll wait to see, but I think it was addressed about the substantial amendments and minor uh, when she talked about our plan talks about 15% percent versus 10 percent in the various years. Um, we'll see how that jives with what HUD say, and I think that's what we're waiting for from my view. And then as far as Mr. Murphy, um, I'm glad that you can see where the RAP program, for one, we moving on various fronts as to implementation of the charter. I would say that to you and Pastor Gilbert, who's been watching. The charter is in effect, and so now we're trying to tighten up some loose ends, but you know I was a no person for the charter, and I still want to do amendments in the future, but I'm still moving in good faith to develop ordinances because when we put this ethics committee in place, I want some written out rules of ethics. I don't want people creating them half cocked and I want qualifications on these ethics people. For example, I might not want elected and appointed people to be on the ethics board. And so we got some things to put in place on what our standards will be and what ordinances will look like in my mind before I can start appointing. And I hear the beeper. I like Mr. Guerrero's proposed appointment from the third ward, so he ahead of me on his. But um, I wish I could be on the ethics committee from the first ward. Y'all want me to appoint myself? Why y'all shaking your head? But now I would end by saying this. On all the documents with numbers and addresses, some of it is confidential, the public won't always be able to see what we see. But I will gladly show y'all stuff privately. You might not be able to go along with it because that means we would have to estimate how many people would be here on any given night, treat people accurately, and we would have a ton of paperwork. Your, your lap might look like my desk. So I'm sensitive to it, but if it can happen, yeah, but if not, bear with us. Mr. Davis. Yes, I'd like to address uh, Mr. Murphy 
Uh, I think we kind of said the same thing, but I'm with my colleague, Mr. Mays, where we really need to sit down and take a little time dealing with that charter because it's a document, and I know you're adamant because you was a part of it, and I don't blame you. I give it all I got if I was a part of it. But the residents at the end of the day that I represent, most of them is going into foreclosure as we speak. That's why we dealing with trying to remove houses out of the grips of land bank. Now that charter, it's, it's, we already have an old charter, 74. The new charter's got benefit, but then again, I have to look from the eyes of gentrification. A lot of residents in my side of town is losing their home, it, there's no help, and you got all these other ordinances as well as the water quality, property taxes, the, the, uh, the, the, quality, uh, the property value of their homes going down while the taxes finna go up. And now, I don't want more residents to be in a, a position of hardship no more than what they are. It's hard to get insurance and everything else over there. Now once, and both of them go hand in hand. I deal with land bank quite a bit. I was over there even this week. And what's going on over there, I don't know about the rest of the city, but over there on that north side, I can speak for the second ward. The president of the association, as well as I am used to be a historic district commissioner. They grab, seek all of this money, as well as down in Detroit, they do the same, from hardest hit fund that the purgatory lending, that, that money hardest hit funds was supposed to be used for, they sit on it and didn't let the public know about it. Now they only seek money to demo houses over there on the north side. But they don't seek to help nobody repair their houses. So I'm very careful with a charter when I know it's gonna cause more hardship. Yes, we're moving forward. And as well as the Ethics and Accountability Board. I said in the wrong spirit because of this. Charters should be for underhanded government, backdoor government, but not for, you can't legislate righteousness up here. It ain't gonna stop them arguments. But I will say this, a qualified charter commission should be able to instruct. And then in the charter, as Councilman May said, we gotta have clauses, how do we remove the person we appoint? We're given a lot of authority because people put me in this chair to fight hard to get resources over there on that north side. But I don't wanna hand it off to somebody that come back, I'm fighting my own appointment. And now it, it voids out everybody sitting here, including the mayor. So we got to be careful. We want to move forward on the charter. But I know how I feel when you put it together. But sometimes it be underhanded stuff that you might not be aware of. And I'm, I'm looking from all angles because sometimes you think you're doing good and the intent is right. But at the end of the day, the snow plow just happened. The last residents probably, they haven't been plowed yet. We always last of everything. And it can't always be like that. We can't settle, no big eyes and little use. We got to be careful. We, we need to implement the charter, but it's a push for a reason. Gentrification is real. Keep living, you're gonna see what I'm saying. Detroit is already going through it. Flint is on its way, and I can say what I know, not what I heard. I'm having conversation now with developers. Guess where? In an impoverished community, in an impoverished side of town. My colleagues know nothing of it. I have the conversations. You will see shortly. I'm, I'm, I'm animate about what I'm saying. We got to be careful when we sign off on deals we are not thoroughly convinced of. Yeah. Yeah, just briefly, I wanted to start off with, Mr. R.L. Mitchell did bring up that this month is Black History Month, so I think it's important that we do recognize that. Uh, here today. Uh, also, Mr. Woodson, I think you brought up some good points and continue doing your research. I know you like to be involved. And uh, Mr. Murphy, uh, as you know, I was one of the supporters of the charter, but I do understand that it's a big document and uh, uh, that we got to make sure that we make sure everything's done right uh, so we don't have to come back and make any fixes or changes. But we can always do that too to make sure that we always accomplish everything the best as we can. Uh, so just know I'm working on that. I know a lot of our colleagues are working on that. And I hope to see it get implemented in the future. But as we've stated, it may take time to make sure it's all done correctly. Ms. Winfrey Carter. Um, Mr. Murphy, in reference to the charter, please be advised that I am um, diligently reading over the charter and I am working hard to find someone for the ethics committee. That's all I need to say. Thank you, Mr. Griggs. 
Okay. Uh, the real gentrification is going to come when the Cleveland water rates increase in about three or four years. That will be the real gentrification. If you want cheaper water, you'll use the Flint River. The river did not poison this town. The employees poisoned this town. Right now, somebody has snuck the $58 million out of our budget that was to upgrade that water plant. Now think about the Navy people that are out in the middle of the ocean drinking water made out of seawater. Any water treatment plant can make drinking water. Even the astronauts are drinking their own urine. They can make drinking water up in space. It's the employees that were at the Flint water treatment plant that poisoned this town. It was not the river. And there's another problem right now. We're violating state law. We do not have a backup system. The state law, Michigan state law says every city must have a backup system. That means your water has to come from two different sources. You can't dip water in Lake Huron with Gliwa and then KWA dip in the same tub of water. That's called a redundant system. So right now, we're violating Michigan state laws by not having a true backup water system. This Gliwa thing is going to bite this town heavy. And that's when you're going to see true gentrification when those water rates go up. And the only way you'll get water rates to ever go down is go right back to our Flint, Michigan asset, the Flint Water Treatment Plant, and keep this money in this town and keep the employees in this town instead of dishing it out to Detroit and like everywhere else. I want the money in Flint and I want to stay here. I'm done. Thank you. Um, for those that are interested, the, the Glee WA board meeting is scheduled for February 28th at 2 p.m. at 735 Randall Street. And so um, this board meeting will take place if maybe my colleagues know something that I don't, but I don't believe that there's going to be representation from the citizens of Flint. Um, I would like to um, address Mr. Woodson. Um, if Mr. Woodson wants to put his request in writing for the 552,000 and something else that he did and, and drop it off to um, the city council office to one of the secretaries, um, I am willing to make the referral I, for wh whatever reason. I think that it was said that it was answered, but I'd be more than glad to make sure that, that if you didn't get that answered, that we do get that answered for you. Um, it, it was answered. Um, the other thing I want to um, acknowledge is, um, I don't know what my colleagues heard, um, but I didn't receive a response to the specific issues that HUD was um, raising. Um, but I have placed a referral um, on record at the, in the um, special affairs meeting asking for a copy of those um, emails from the HUD department as well as a response from um, Mrs. Wilcox. Um, I made that as a referral and if, the, if anyone thinks that I need to fill out a Freedom of Information Act I'm willing to do whatever I, I think. I did do a referral. Is that okay? Okay. Um, so um, with that being said, um, I do want an ethics and accountability board, Mr. Pastor Gilbert, and um, charter revision because um, this council definitely needs some oversight as much as we, um, I think there's a difference of opinion on what professionalism is in conduct. And so any help that we can have, it's unfortunate if we have to put together a board um, but I, for one, would love to be checked by somebody that has no political agenda and simply wants to move policy, public policy forward 
and, and take away any stigma of political agendas and or advancement. And so that's all I have. Um, next thing on the agenda is um, discussion item 180024, referral advertising the seven recently acquired homes, a referral from Councilperson Mays to the Finance, Law, and Planning and Development. He would like to know if the city can advise for $100 each the seven homes that it recently assumed ownership of. Um, is, is anyone from the administration here to speak on this? Yeah, I'm, I'm, I got some questions. But I don't want to ask no questions until after I understand the intent of the request. <laughs> Ms. Wilcox? Good evening. Good evening. So the specific question is, can the city um, issue um, a bid for $100 to sell the properties for $100 a piece? Is that correct? I don't know. Councilman Mays has made it back to his seat. Yeah, I can Maybe speak on that. Maybe he can speak to that. Yeah, if I may, I can speak on Please. that. Please. The agenda item says a referral from Councilman Mays. Um, I read it into the room. And he would like to know if the city can advertise for $100 each to seven houses. Um, even though that's how it's written, my request was to put um, the discussion of the houses um, on this agenda. And so it's not limited to that, in my opinion, the person who made the request. Um, Ms. Wheeler have, in my opinion, assigned Attorney Millhouse to help develop the rules, ordinances, or whatever we come up with. There's been two meetings. In the first meeting, if I'm not mistaken, it was Ms. Wheeler, the city attorney, Mr. Newsom, Ms. Wilcox, myself, and Mr. Millhouse. In the second meeting, it was Mr. Millhouse, myself, Ms. Wilcox, and Mr. Newsom. We are looking forward to a third meeting, which might also include Councilman Davis. And so we are now developing rules as to how to see if we can dispose of the seven houses openly, legally, and transparently. Um, Ms. Wheeler sent out a letter to the occupants of houses and in and, 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 and so many words she said, we'll look at your occupancy, um, we'll consider you, and we are moving to see how we would do this. And then she put her phone number as a contact. So we've made contact. We've spent about 5000 for liability insurance. And so now I wanted to put this on this agenda because council as a whole might have some opinions and ideas. I got a lot of them and I can talk about them, but um, in the last council meeting, I heard a request, I think, through you, Madam Chair, to Ms. Wilcox and or Mr. Newsom to see if the land bank was willing to take houses back. I'm not trying to see if they would take them back, but based on what we heard that day, they said once we took them, they wouldn't take them back. Now, if Mr. Newsom and them have an answer from your request, um, whether it's yes or no, I want to move forward in a quick manner of the disposing of them. Whether we dispose of them at the rate of delinquent taxes on a land contract, whether we dispose of them for a dollar, whether we give them out as community awards, um, whether we use people who I've met on construction and plumbing programs, kids at children at Northwestern, um, young people with Job Corps. I've made some relationships that will come in and paint and do different stuff if need be. 
I've talked to a variety of, um, of the occupants, the occupants on Hobson, Home Street. Um, we have a person who was paying 800 a month rent um, on Laurel Oak. We have somebody by the last name of Wilson contacting us on um, Woolcock who is ready to, they say, transfer $10,000 on some type of agreement they had with the land bank prior, 10,000 cash. Um, we looking to see what is occupied and what is not occupied. There are some discrepancies we've looked at. Some of them don't have, in one case, one of them don't have a water account, but they say they live there. So we're checking some stuff out. I anticipate there will be a time where the interested parties, occupants, former owners or whatever will come before this council and they might plead their case. But we are developing criteria on a variety of pro property, vacant, occupied, should it go toward the occupants? Can we legally do it without bidding it out? Can we create criteria to give houses away to renters who might want to become homeowners? We are going over a variety of legalities of what we might can do. And then once we settle on those legalities, we will, through ordinance, have a hearing or through rulemaking, if Ms. Will would believe is sufficient and need to be done. But that's what we're doing right now. And so just as an update, I wanted this on the special meeting. And then, without going into any details with that type of update, I'm hoping within the next two, three weeks, 30, 45 days, we have something to bring before this council. It could be sooner, it could be later, but if we keep putting our heads together in a group of nine versus two or five or six, I think we'll get there faster. So I think you can see that this was dealing with advertising but it was bigger than that because probably on the discussion items, um, you might see this about these seven homes in one or more places. So I applaud us, but no, this discussion was bigger than $100 for advertising each house. Thank you. I want to make a statement if I can, Ms. Wilcox. Um, and I, and I want to be very careful in my statement. I have um, maybe over 15 or 20 years of banking background. Started working in banking when I was 18 years old. I had the ability to be a branch manager, personal banker, um, had my um, licensed for um, investments. But in coming up in a culture like that, um, there are some boundaries that you find yourself governed by. Um, and in that environment, because of the um, ability to cross lines, and the bank always called it the spirit of the law, because sometimes, Ms. Wilcox, you can find yourself in a gray area that has the ability to be based on interpretation. And although there's that gray area, you might say yes to it, but the spirit of the law tells you Although I may be able to do this, this is not a good idea, Mr. Newsom. And I say that to say that when you work among people, our internal guidelines 
will cause some of us to believe that certain things are acceptable, whereas to others they're not. Thus is the concern of ethical behavior, integrity decisions. And I'm not saying that about anybody. I'm saying that as human beings, depending on culturally how you were raised and whether you were in an environment where integrity was drilled into you. And I remember in my family, integrity was drilled into my kids and myself to say, if I go into a restaurant and Miss Wilcox, my meal is $20 and I give them a $10 bill in error and they give me change for a 50, although nobody knows but me, my integrity button and character button should be saying red flag, red flag, give that money back. Nobody knows but you, but somebody could lose their job, right? And I said that to say this, I support us looking at the ability to do something like this that would benefit this entire community. My concern was that there was too what appeared to be too much personal contact between one person and another, and one person being an, a pers person of authority. And I shared this with Councilman Winfrey as we were discussing it, because I wanted him to understand in the banking world, Mr. Newsom, if you were my brother and you desire to purchase a piece of property and any of you have that have bought in foreclosed homes, Bank of America was really good at this. And in their fine print they said, you cannot buy this if you are a relative or a cousin's cousin's cousin to anybody that works for this organization. Now, that's arm's length like nobody's business. My cousin could live in California. We ain't seen each other in 30 years, but this organization deemed that appropriate in an effort to maintain their, their integrity to say, we're not going to show any favoritism whatsoever. But when I use my influence possibly in an effort to, um, possibly cause somebody to benefit more from a scenario than other people that I may not know, there's the ability to, sh to show some favoritism. And so as we move into this, I like the idea of it. I can't say that in my opinion these seven fit that because we didn't develop a plan first. There were some houses that we knew people that may live in them. And therefore, it can be seen as using your influence in an effort to get the home to you at a lower price. I'm not saying that that's the case, but there is the appearance of it. And so I just want to be able to go on the record to say my concern with this group of houses, not the way that we're going, but with this group of houses, I'm uncomfortable with the way that it's being done. Will I support that plan? I think it's an awesome plan. I think that um, Mr. Del Maroney, it would probably answer some of his concerns with people being able to qualify for the poverty exemption in their property taxes and our water bills. Why? Because although those options aren't available to renters, if in some way we can create an environment where our residents can come in and buy these homes that they deem is still um, rehabable, then we turn renters into owners they begin to take advantage of all of the programs that possibly are available to them. And in addition to that, they add value to the communities in which they live in. Because now, in my mind, renters view homes different than owners. Secondly, they add to our um, revenue because our property taxes are increased. Now, I know that they are because if, whether you're a buyer or a renter, the property taxes are still paid, but there's that benefit. And they also sometimes benefit from tax breaks and things of that nature. And so it just, to me, the idea of this creates a healthy community. 
it begins to revitalize the community. And so I just want the record to show that I think that it is, it has the ability to do some great things. Um, I just don't, I think maybe in my opinion, the cart was placed before the horse in this picture. And so I'm simply stating my opinion. I don't want to debate with anybody because that's not what I'm trying to do. I'm trying to be respectful to everybody's view and I just wanted to share mine. So I thank you guys for everything you're doing. If you decide that you want to speak, please feel free to speak Madam on however Chair. you want to. Councilman Mays. Yeah, Madam Chair. Um, I'm glad this is on the agenda. And I'm very careful as a trustee of this city to try to throw the city out there in a way of any type of liability. In other words, I'm very careful when I speak as well, but I've heard some folks say some things like folks in authority is doing some underhanded, trying to help certain folks, well, I'm going to stand up and say, in fact, I am trying to help folks. But as far as borderline ethical and underhanded or anything of that nature, I take offense to. Under state law, any city, village, or township has the right to have their property prior to it going to a land bank. This is state law. And I don't see that state law as underhanded. And I'm gonna keep repeating that when the land bank, the county treasurer was here, it was three council people missing. You needed to hear, in my opinion, what the land bank said, what the county treasurer said. And one of the things that stuck out in my mind, I can't speak for the five or six who were here, was that when our delinquent taxes go over to the county and they collect what they can, if they don't collect a million dollars worth, they'll look to 2019 and take our million dollars to balance their books. And then I asked the question, well, when the land bank collects those delinquent taxes is based upon what they kind of make the selling price be, do they have to give the county or the city any of that money back? And the answer was no. At that point, I said whether we get 100,000, 10,000, or 20 is better than what we could get under the scenario we heard. And so that's in the public interest. I'm a trustee of this city. My job is to try to generate revenue if need be. And I also agree with you to turn renters into homeowners and to stabilize neighborhoods. That's why in the first ward, I teamed up with one of my better block club presidents, Sean Harrison. You'll meet him. We've been talking about this for three, four years before we done it. If you check the record, not just on this batch of houses, Ms. Galloway, I've asked council to do this and the city to do this for three years back. We did it with Jefferson property last year, and it's set for a year. I think it should be disposed of back or something. I don't think there's nothing wrong with helping folks out in hard times where there's water crisis and they replace hot water heaters and plumbing that the state and the city did not and lost their house. I have no problem with looking at what the land bank do. I don't know if we can do what the land bank do. The land bank will look at a husband and wife, such as at 17 West Home, and enter into a land contract with the daughter. Keep it in the family. I've seen that. I'm benefiting from that type of activity with the land bank. Rosie B. Mays, God bless her soul, my mama got sick at 85, she lost her house. But guess who they signed the land contract with? Her son, me, Councilman Mays. She's dead and gone, and I'm sitting in a house that our family owned for 20 years and living in it 
than one from office from there. So I'm gonna look at what the land bank do. If they've helped families, y'all can call it nepotism, epotism, repetism, cronyism, all of the isms. Because if my block club people support me and they want to do stabilization of neighborhoods in the area, five of these houses is in the first war. And I, you don't have to believe me, we'll bring in Sean Harrison and his whole block club. We've been talking about this, not with this batch, but with any batch for three, four years. So all of these false premises that people talking politely about, we finna find out about. We ain't made no policy on what we gonna do. I know 100% that the city of Flint in some shape or form had a dollar house giveaway because my brother Kevin Mays had got one. It made the news back in the day on Piper. And so my position is I'm gonna explore the legalities of a dollar. I'm gonna explore the legalities of what allows the land bank to deal with family members. I'm gonna explore, I'm gonna explore the possibility of occupants. I'm gonna look at occupants who is in cooperation with each other as it relates to owners and occupants. And I'm gonna look at occupants that's adversarial with owners and I'm gonna look at it. It's gonna be just like a tenant in good standing or one that need to be evicted. I'm the only one who have said publicly, I think so far, I don't mind evicting folks. I'm looking at squatters because as we talk about it, some people, according to some folks' policy, if it's occupied, they get first crack. I said not if they hear an address and just go over there. It was vacant. So I'm looking at all the details and I'm glad it's only seven of them and some is occupied and some is unoccupied because I'm calling it a pilot project. So when Councilman Mays introduce a pilot project and colleagues vote on it, that's what it is. And so I'm not out to pull the rug from under a pilot project that I introduced. I'm out to, for once and for all, find out the do's and don'ts, what you can and can't do. And I can tell you right now, the charter has a section about disposing of property. And it tells us to create an ordinance and dispose of it by ordinance. And so I'm in the process of trying to create these ordinances that allows this public municipality to do it and do it in an open and transparent legal way for some public purpose. And I think Ms. Wheeler started out telling us public purpose, I've heard the arm length transaction and that's how we gonna do it. And hopefully nobody lose sleep over it, but I really take offense of people saying it started out wrong. No, it didn't start out wrong. It started out with a legal understanding of state law of what we can do, we did it, and now it's, it's progressing with a legal understanding of ordinance. And so I done heard it two, three times and I've been quiet. I've heard you say it, I've heard Ms. Worthing say it, and I think it's a false portrayal. We didn't start out wrong. We started out following the state law of what we could do with property, and now we're moving forward according to law. Point of information, Councilman Mays. You've called names, but my question is, do you remember when the administration had some concerns about the liability for the city. Yeah, I called more names. Thank you. Mr. Newsom didn't want to do it. Ms. Wilcox, I don't think, didn't really want to do it. 
The city attorney, Ms. Wheeler, in some cases didn't want to do it. Some folks wanted to not deal with the occupied versus the unoccupied. So if it makes you feel better, if you concede that you didn't want to do it, you ain't in company by yourself. But the, mat but the fact of the matter is, five votes of this council, even with an abstention by me, did it. Now, I might not abstain in future votes because I might separate 1219 West Home and vote on the other six. So you in good company, as a matter of fact, me and the president of this council, Mr. Winfrey, met with the mayor on this as well. <laughs> I let the mayor say what her position is. But believe me, um, Madam Chair, I'll always name names. That ain't no crime. It ain't even against the rules. I can say who vote, yay, nay, I can preference it. So that ain't nothing if your point of information was to include other names of folks who didn't want to do it. That's been done. I'm concentrating on the majority who did want to do it, and hopefully that majority will adopt the rules according to law, and we'll get it done. And these properties will be properly transferred. I don't think we want to hold them, but I even told Mr. Newsom, the one over on Woolcock is so nice to me that in the water crisis, we've had all kind of folks come in and out of Flint with employment. In Detroit, they got for the mayor, Randy, what they call the Manubian Mansion. And that's where the mayor lives. Now, I don't think a finance director, people coming in and out, ordered by the DEQ, certain people with certifications, is like the mayor of Detroit. But I don't mind holding on to one for folks who coming in and out of town. It's a city-owned property. I don't mind that. I'll look at that, Mr. Garrett. I don't mind holding on to three because if a police get hired at a lower salary than Fenton and Owasso, $12, $13 an hour, I don't mind supplementing their salary and putting that police officer in one for a year or two and they living in the community in which they protect and serve. So that's how creative I am with this property. And I'm not closing the door on administrators on police officers on it, all I want, or live in it, in the city on it, I just want to know what's the rules. And I can assure you, Pastor Gilbert, I don't think there's no rule against a city owning a resident, whether it's in the first ward, the third ward, or the fifth ward, and helping supplement a beginning officer's income so they can live in the neighborhood in which they protect and serve. So that's how my mind thinks when people say I done did something wrong or you had a good heart. No, I think I did it right. And <laughs> I'm doing it for a reason. And one of my legacies gonna be known as this real estate housing program. It's gonna be known for dollar giveaways. It's gonna be known for helping people. It's going to be known for administrators and or police officers. And all the naysayers who didn't have the vision at the beginning, watch what they're going to say at the end. And watch what the people of the city of Flint are going to say when the vision is talked about. And so that's all I'm saying, Ms. Galloway. I hear you loud and clear as it relates to what you see. I'm just trying to give you a bigger vision with what I see, and maybe you will come more on board. Now, I'm not saying you ain't on board, but I said more on board, because I keep hearing from you and Ms. Worth and them. Council Mays, point of information. Yeah. Are you aware that you keep calling names are you aware 
that everything I've said is liability towards the city, nothing to do with you? No, I'm not aware. Okay. But what's wrong, what's, what's that got to do with names? Because you're misappropriating what I said. I oh. just want you to maintain that Councilwoman Galloway's number one objective is liability to the city. May I Period. May I politely ask you this question? Please. Didn't you allude to it kind of maybe being not a good idea of some sort? Councilman Mays, I'm I said it's asking. a great idea. It has the potential to be a great idea. It sure does, but did you allude to it as maybe not at your earlier I alluded step? to my discomfort with right. this round of houses. Right. And, Thank you. And why don't you name specifically? Wait, can, do you mind yielding to the attorney no, quickly mind, so that I, before she I, leaves? Yeah. As I yield, I want you to circle back and talk about what you think is unethical. After she I didn't, finished. I didn't say that. I said oh. that there is the appearance. Okay. And, and Councilman Mays, you can get two ethical people in this room. And you will have some, and, and that's why I was so specific in what I said, Councilman Mays. Ethics, according to you, is clearly by interpretation. So I can see why it would be important to put something in writing. All I'm saying is, if my boyfriend or my husband lives in a property, before I remove a property from a list, there is the appearance of utilizing my influence inappropriately. You look at it one way, but I guarantee you if you put it before an ethics class, it would definitely be, if nothing else, on the frown side. So, M so Attorney so Wheeler, Ms. please. So, Ms. Galloway, if I may respond before I yield to her legal point, um, don't do like that if you want me to yield. Just, my position is this. If you look at one thing, Ethically or unethically, that's you. Clearly. And if I look at one thing ethically and unethically, and we can take this specific case of 1219 West Home Street, and we can put it before your best ethics board. Mm -hmm. I'm willing to do it. And you can look at it, and I'm telling you, you don't even know how many people I've had relationships with all across this city and who they are. Point of so, information, Councilman Mays. Now, my point was... You do realize point. that I'm simply <laughs> using Talking your... about your, me. No, simply using your own words. Because you said it for public record. So, so don't pretend like I'm correct. saying so, something. So if so I'm I may saying, continue, I'm, I'm not saying. arguing with you. Okay. I okay. divulge my conflict and my interest and abstain from the vote because of the relationship. And I did it because I knew you, Kate Fields, her, and anybody else to talk about it. So all I'm saying to you is beneficial to call names. If you think because this council in a majority voted for property and the one that had connection with Mays and or relationship shouldn't have been in it, then guess what? It is. And I'm here to tell you it's there. And so you should call names because when you Councilman talk- Councilman Mays, point of information. When you talk in riddles and rhymes, yeah. Um, are you willing to yield? The attorney is not feeling well, but she would like something entered into the record. Are you willing to let her speak? What I, and I said, yeah, but then you came back with some, and I didn't yield you to you to do that. So my position is that whatever you and the attorney agree on or mm -hmm. disagree on, this is a council this meeting. Have nothing to do and with so me. even though that's our city attorney, I'm telling you, the meeting is going well. And it can continue to go well, but when I oh yield God. to her, as you smile, I'll come That's right fine. back and That's we'll fine. talk about the nitty gritty of That's what so you good. and others have been alluding to without naming names and specifics. Oh. This community deserves specifics, not rhymes and riddles. I'll yield to the attorney, Thank and then you. we'll come back and talk specifics. I, I'm going to need to leave now because I'm not feeling well, and I don't want to, you know, exit. Um, 
be sickly in the chamber. I just wanted to point out two things. One is that whatever policy that we put in place, it has to pass all the muster with regard to ethics and standards of conduct and things of that nature. And we're certainly going to do that um, and abide by the uh, current charter. In addition to that, um, we have been working on the policy for the sale and, and reuse of city-owned um, property. Um, just got a, another draft of that today. So we'll continue to work on that and um, make sure that's disseminated. And in addition to that, um, the city policy as far as the charter, uh, just to make sure everybody's aware, does say that no property can be disposed of without it going through ordinance or resolution through the council. So everything will um, remain open and transparent. Um, and like I said, we welcome getting this done. Uh, I think we'd like to expedite this because uh, this has been in place since, I think the, the properties reverted in December. And so we'd like to go ahead and you know, get this moved along appropriately to bring some resolution to this. So I just want to say that and thank you. Ms. Wheeler, did you say, did I hear you right? You said the property can be disposed of without action of council? No, I did not say that. You said um, without there's a procurement, or res There's a procurement policy, and within the procurement policy, it talks about the sale or disposition of city-owned property. In that, it says that no property, and I'm paraphrasing a little bit right now, um, no property shall be sold or, or transferred without prior approval of the city council. city council. So it has to come through here. It has to pass the scrutiny. And um, like I said, I wish I could stay a little bit longer, but uh, and, I, I'm, I'm going to be a little bit sick, and I don't want and, to stay here. Like, and that's what I had thought you said. Madam Chair, if I may now continue, because I did yield. We had a property, Jefferson School. It was called Second Chance Church. And I bet the record will show that even though Minister Herb Winfrey is a minister there. You might say he had an interest and it was unethical, but because you maybe had ever need that you might- Point of information, Mays. Where I go is irrelevant, and I want to understand how that requests to this. And for the record, and for you. the record, Second Chance was involved before Councilman Madam, um, Winfrey uh, even Madam, had anything Madam to do with Chair, it. Madam I'm, Chair, I'm not going to go down this line Madam of questioning. Chair, Councilman we already, Mayor, just so you Madam know. Madam Chair, I have the right to say if you've said on the record two people's look at ethics might differ. If that's appropriate. Madam Chair, why can't you did this yesterday? Because I'm not you going to be I'm not going to be abused talking, by man. you, Councilman Mays. All and I'm you asking just is, hate it when you when you hear you something you don't agree with. You can't sit like us and take it. Point and of wait. information. You always Point interrupt. of information. Councilman Mays is it appropriate for me to ask you to be respectful? I made my statement. It was not about you. I spoke specifically about, about me. me. You just didn't Councilman say my Mays, name. come on. I am coming Let's on. Be, so okay, let go me ahead. make my statement Please. about ethics and analogies. If we had a similar property a year ago, which was Second Chance Church, and Minister Herb Winfrey was a minister there, and it was the property connected, I don't see a problem. If the city attorney or ethics committee or some say he should abstain, well, I won't punish him for it. But you might look at that as unethical. I might not. So you're right, two people might look at something different. But now when it comes to the secular world, that's what I hear you alluding to. So I just hate it it took you this long because Kate Fields didn't bite her tongue. Miss Worthen didn't bite her tongue. Oh, just say what you think. You think from not being here, and I don't know if you didn't check it out, that whether I voted on 1219 West Home. Now, you don't know probably if I did or didn't. And you making allegations and don't know if I vote in the future. I voted on zero homes. Now, if you telling me I don't have the right to talk about it or develop legislation and policy, let me tell you this. I developed legislation for water and everything across the city. 
And I can assure you, I've had relationships with more than just one. So what you allude to as unethical or the view you might not know, I done bent over backwards to not be unethical. And so I take offense to whatever view you and three more people who's saying something. Get your facts right. Now I'll make a referral through you to the city attorney to tell me whether or not I can even discuss this. Now I make that referral. And, and if they want to send that out house to the United States Ethics Triple A Judgment Committee, I agree to let it go there. And so once we start doing that, we'll have a springboard the right ethics law. That's why, Pastor Gilbert, I think it's so important to develop these ethics ordinances because you're going to have people all over the board, depending on the politics, subpoenaing folks, making judgment, won't look at a minister in a church voting, but want to look in the secular at other things. That's so inappropriate. And so whether it's, whether it's church, whether it's I'm secular, leave. you can leave. If you can't take the truth, I watch something on TV that say the truth can hurt you. What is so upsetting about you discussing this business in a special meeting and we got to move down the road? You want us to continue to make so-called ethical mistakes? But it's going to surprise you if you found out ain't no vote or nothing been made so far. So speak your peace. You just got to have thick skin. When I hear stuff said about me, I want you to identify me. If I hear something said, I'm going to address it. So I would move unless my colleagues got something on this. I ain't going to move to adjourn because, Santino, you know what happened with the um, call for the question. But if we can't discuss the tough issues, including ethics and specifics of property, I want to know who kin to the Wilsons on Woodcock. I want to know if anybody kin to the others. And so if that's part of the scrutiny rules, we just put it in there. Did you hear that, Mr. Newsom, Ms. Wilcox? If those are a part of the due diligence on disposition of the houses, Ms. Galloway, write your concerns out, put them down on paper, and get them to Ms. Wheeler, Mr. Maurice Davis. You might not trust me with them. I might be a little borderline unethical. But I'm not going to give up my position on their committee. I ain't going to give up my position on council because certain females on this council, one black and two white, want to call me a racist. Councilman Mays, what you're talking about is not Jermaine. It is so Jermaine. It is Are not. The it is not. Councilman Mays. Intimidation. Council and I'm tired of it. So call my name. Anytime y'all continue to call me a bully, I Councilman left out of here Mays. last night. Councilman with you Mays, you are me out of person. order. You was out of order last night when you start attacking me. And so Councilman Mays, me, you are I'm out of order. I, ease up on you. I rule you out of order. This is your only only time um, that I'm going to give you an option it, to end now. This is your only warning. There's a motion warning. to adjourn you are in order. order. There's a motion Mays. to adjourn in order. There's a motion to adjourn. Second. Is there? It, second. it has been moved and second. All in favor. Please stand. Say aye. Aye. It's, it's aye. a roll call vote. Out.